welcome back to Movie Shorten. Today we are going to explain a 2007 fantasy adventure film based on the award-winning novel called The Golden Compass. Be aware, there are spoilers. Our story begins in a magical world where people's souls live outside of their bodies in the form of animals, known as daemons. It seems that children's daemons can change from whereas adults' daemons cannot. We see a man known as Lord Azriel walking with a snow leopard, which is his daemon known as Stelmaria. We are told that there are many different worlds and they are connected by dust. A group of children are playing near a stream. A girl called Lyra Bellaqua is making a mud ball while her diamond named Pan is sitting on her shoulder. A boy named Billy is chasing another boy called Roger. Lyra and Roger run through the town with the other children close behind. She stops outside the gates of a college and tells the others they cannot come in because the gates are cursed. Now we see Lyra and Pan entering a large hall. Two men known as Master and Fra Pavel are approaching so they quickly hide in a small cupboard to watch what's going on. When the Master leaves the hall, Lyra sees Pavel putting some powder into a carafe of wine and then he leaves the hall. Before Lyra and Pan can leave, Stelmaria and Azriel enter the hall with a man called Hunt. When Hunt leaves, Azriel pours a glass of wine from the carafe, but before he can drink it, Lyra bursts out of the cupboard in time to stop him. She tells Azriel that she saw a man from the Magisterium put some powder into a carafe. Other people are approaching, so he tells Lyra to quickly go back into the cupboard. After the men are seated, Azriel shows them an image on the wall from a projector of a man and his daemon. He tells them it's from a magnetic north pole in Svalbard, the kingdom of the ice bears. He explains that it is in fact dust coming down from the sky through his daemon and entering the man's body. He tells them it's coming from another world which is invisible for people to see. Fra Pavel from the Magisterium does not like Azriel and it's obvious that Azriel does not like him. Azriel addresses the college board and tells them that with sufficient funds he intends to go to Svalbard to investigate the phenomena. Outside the building, Azriel is scolding Lyra for hiding in the cupboard. She reminds him that she may have saved his life. She mentions dust, and he tells her not to talk about it. Now, Lyra and Roger are walking along the roof of the college, talking about gobblers, which people think may be responsible for the disappearance of children. A woman called Miss Lonsdale leans out of a window and calls Lyra to come inside. We see a large hall filled with teachers and students as a woman named Miss Coulter walks in and tells Lyra that she has met Ragnar Sturluson, the king of the ice bears. Under the table, Mrs. Coulter's daemon, a red-haired monkey, is holding Pan. Miss Coulter tells Lyra that she would like to have her as an assistant when she returns to the north. She then asks the master if she may borrow Lyra for a while. Outside, in a narrow alley, Billy and Roger are walking and talking. Billy's daemon, named Ratter, climbs up a wall but is caught by the monkey. Now, we see the three men, known as the Magisterial Emissary, the first and second high counselors, sitting in a darkened room, plotting against Azrael. The next day, the master enters Lyra's room and gives her a golden compass and tells her to tell no one of it and above all, not to tell Miss Coulter that she has it. Outside, Miss Coulter is ready to leave in an airship to the city and Lyra wants to say goodbye to Roger, but he's nowhere to be found. Once they arrive at the city, they travel in a strange vehicle to Mrs. Coulter's house. When Lyra is alone in her room, she and Pan look at the golden compass, but Lyra doesn't understand how it works. One evening, after arriving back at home, they have an argument about Lyra's shoulder bag. Mrs. Coulter tells her she can't wear it in the house, then sends Lyra to her room. Lyra is so angry. They decide to look in Miss Coulter's office and find some paperwork which looks like a list of children and Miss Coulter may be associated with the gobblers. Before she can return to her room, Mrs. Coulter has found her upstairs and Pan realizes that the monkey isn't there. Lyra runs to her room and finds the monkey is looking at the compass. Pan transforms into an eagle and swoops down, snatching the compass from the monkey and flies out of the window. He calls out to Lyra to follow him. They run off down a darkened street. As Lyra walks through a large warehouse, three men corner her. She manages to duck through a door into another area and a net drops over her. The men grab her, but she is rescued by a group of Egyptians led by Ma Costa, Billy's mother. They take her by boat to a large sailing ship where Lyra meets Lord Fa, Egyptian king. She meets another man called Farder Koram. Lord Fa asks her if there's anything she hasn't told them. She shows them the golden compass and Farder Koram explains how it's used, but he is unable to use it. Lyra says she'll try. She sets the three hands on the compass and concentrates. Then she sees some images of where the missing children may have been taken. 
We see a facility which is guarded, and inside the facility are many children, as if in a classroom. Billy and Roger are sitting near each other, and a woman is asking Billy to write a letter to his mother. But Billy doesn't want to write the lies they're telling him. Now we see Pavel and Miss Coulter walking in the grounds of the Magisterium. She is telling Pavel that Lyra has the golden compass, but she is sure Lyra doesn't know how to use it. An assistant brings Mrs. Coulter a box with two metallic drone-like insects, which can fly and find Lyra. She sends them off. Meanwhile, in the far north, Azrael is walking in the snow amidst snow-capped mountains. Suddenly, he is attacked by local native men known as the Samoyed. He and Stelmaria try to get away but are eventually caught and taken away. All of the Samoyed men's daemons are wolves. Back to the sailing ship and Lyra is on the deck looking at the golden compass when suddenly the two drone insects appear. As one of them attacks Pan, Lyra drops the compass. One of them tries to pick up the compass while the other one attacks Lyra, but she ducks and then strikes it with a stick and it flies away. Farder Karem catches the remaining one under a glass. Lord Fa vows to bring justice to the gobblers, the child thieves. It's nighttime and Lyra and Pan are up on deck talking when suddenly a woman appears. Her name is Serafina Pekala and she is a witch. Her daemon named Kaisa is not with her. She tells Lyra that children have been taken to Bovangar and it is guarded by a regiment of Tartars with wolf daemons. She tells Lyra that she will find help in a town called Trollisund on the coast of Naraway. Then Serafina flies away. The next day the ship arrives at Trollisund where Lyra meets Lee Scoresby and his daemon called Hester. Scoresby is an aeronaut. He tells Lyra that he's there to help a friend by the name of Lorik Byronson, who is an armored bear. Scoresby tells her that Lorik would be a good asset to help her on her quest. She leaves to find Lorik Byronson. Lyra and Quarem find Lorik working behind I. Nursen's bar, and they offer Lorik employment, but he says he is working for the townspeople. Lyra realizes he's being paid with whiskey. A drunk bear. Wonderful. Lyra is disappointed in Lorik, but he tells her that the townspeople got him drunk until he went to sleep. Then they took his armor and an ice bear cannot fight or go to war without its armor. He explains that he was exiled from Svalbard when he fought another bear and lost. They are about to leave when Lyra looks at the compass and sees what happened to Lorik. That he was a prince but now he has lost everything. She tells him where his armor is being kept and he asks her name. Then tells her he will join her campaign. Then in a rush he is off to retrieve his armor from the Magisterium's office in Trollisund with Lyra and Pan following him. Outside the office, there's a group of armored soldiers pointing their rifles at the office door, waiting for Lorik to appear. Suddenly, Lorik, wearing his armor, bursts through the wall next to the door, growling at everyone. Before the captain of the soldiers can give the order to fire, Scoresby puts a gun to his head and advises them that it's not a good idea. The captain drops his gun. Now we see the Magisterium emissary telling Pavel about the Egyptians heading north to Bolvengar, and they must be stopped. The emissary tells Pavel he has sent Mrs. Coulter to find Lyra. We see Miss Coulter traveling north in her airship. The Egyptians with Lyra, Scoresby, and Lorik are walking through a forest on their trek north. They come to the Samoyed lands and set up camp to rest for the night. In a tent, Lyra is looking at the compass and sees a small cabin in the next valley. She leaves the tent to ask Lorik if he'll take her to the cabin before anyone realizes they've gone. On the way, they see hundreds of witches flying up high. When they arrive at the cabin, Lyra enters alone. She finds Billy hiding under a cover and is very scared. His daemon has been taken from him. Lyra tells Pan that's intercision when the daemon has been removed. Lyra takes Billy on Lorik's back to return to their camp. Ma Costa is so happy to have her son once again. Suddenly, they are attacked by the Samoyed men. The Egyptians, Scoresby, and Lorik are fighting them. Somehow, Lyra is captured and taken away by some Samoyed men. They take her to Svalbard. Meanwhile, Scoresby and Lorik are flying to Svalbard to save Lyra. Lyra is presented to Ragnar, the king, and she tells Ragnar that she is Lorik's daemon, and if he wants her to be his daemon, he will have to fight Lorik alone. Now we see Lorik approaching Svalbard, and Lyra is watching him coming as Ragnar prepares to do battle with Lorik. Lyra goes to Lorik and tells him what she said to Ragnar. Lorik is happy to have another chance to fight Ragnar. The two bears fight, and it looks like Lorik is losing. But then he looks at Lyra and comes back even stronger, defeating Ragnar. Lorik is now king of the ice bears. Ragnar tells Lyra he will now take her to Bovangar. They come to an ice bridge, but it's not very strong. Lyra crosses on her own while Lorik waits behind. The bridge starts to collapse, but she runs and makes it across. 
Lorik tells her to wait for him. He is going to get Scoresby and the Egyptians, but Lyra doesn't wait. She can see Bovangar in the distance. As Lyra approaches, the door opens and a man tells her she'll be safe if she comes inside. She gives him a false name and enters. He takes her to a large dining room where all the children are eating. She finds Roger and tells him she has a plan to rescue the children. He shows her a quiet room where she can be alone. Mrs. Coulter's airship arrives and she and some of the staff enter the room where Lyra is hiding under the table, listening. Mrs. Coulter tells them that Lord Azrael has bribed his captors and has set up a laboratory in the far north, but the soldiers are on their way to capture him. Then she leaves the room, but some of the staff find Lyra and capture her. They take her to the intercision room and place her in the chamber. The equipment is started, but before the procedure can be completed, Mrs. Coulter rushes in and stops the machine. We see Lyra waking up on a bed with Pan next to her. Mrs. Coulter is relieved to find Lyra is okay. Lyra is scared of Mrs. Coulter, but she tells Lyra a story. Lyra suddenly realizes that Mrs. Coulter is in fact her mother, and Lord Israel is actually her father. Mrs. Coulter asks Lyra for the compass, but Lyra gives her the tin that has the drone insect inside. When the tin is open, the insect flies at Mrs. Coulter and she drops to the floor. Lyra quickly runs from the room. She finds the intercision room and destroys the chamber. Now the front door is open and all the children run outside with Lyra. But the Tartar regiment with their wolf daemons is there to stop them. Just as their captain orders a wolf to attack Lyra, Lorik jumps in and strikes down the wolf. The children try to escape with the Tartar soldiers after them. As the captain is about to strike Lyra with the sword, Serafina lands in front of him and kills him. All the witches have come to help Lyra and the children. A fierce battle ensues and the soldiers use hooks to tie Lorik down. Now the Egyptians arrive to join the fight. Scoresby also arrives and starts shooting the soldiers that are holding Lorik. He shoots some of the ropes and Lorik escapes the bonds. When the battle comes to an end, Lorik stands erect and growls loudly. So many children are reunited with their families. Lord Fogg gives Lyra a look of admiration. Roger joins Lyra and they head off in Scoresby's airship with Lorik and Serafina to save her father, Lord Azrael. As they fly off through the night sky, Lyra tells Roger that they will sort out a few things for the future. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.